Hey there! Welcome to Hobie on YouTube. This time around I have a contemporary Swiss Army knife style knife, one that's currently in production and that you can easily buy should you want one. But I say Swiss Army knife style knife because it's not a Swiss knife. It's an Italian knife. It's from Fox Knives out of Maniago, Italy. And uh, if you have a fox knife, or for that matter, a viper knife, or a lion steel, or an MKM consortium, or even an old bear by Antonini, you have a knife from Maniago, Italy. And Maniago is one of Europe's oldest knife making centers, much like Zoligan, Germany. It has a very long history and tradition of knife making. I do own one other fox knife this beautiful modern folder in Bacote wood. And I've been so impressed with this knife that I just couldn't wait to see what Fox's offering was in a six-bladed utility knife. So this knife is much like a Victorinox Spartan, and I'll compare it to a Victorinox Spartan as the video goes along. And that may not be the most fair comparison because this knife does cost over three times what a Spartan costs. But as you see this knife and the premium features it offers, you'll realize that Victorinox just really doesn't have anything to compare it with. Um, these are features that we've been asking Victorinox for for a long time, many of us, and the kind of features that if you do find on a vintage Swiss Army knife, you know, they're highly desirable. First, I'd like to show you the packaging because Fox does a great job in their packaging and their presentation. So it comes in this really cool uh, black box, pretty heavy cardboard with Fox's logo there on the front. It did have a little sticker here that uh, you have to slice so you know that your knife has not been open and put on display or handled by someone or sold and returned or anything like that. It's absolutely new to you. There's their model number and it's kind of hard to read but Fox refers to this knife as simply their multi-purpose pocket knife. Now, first thing you're going to see when you open the box is that they give you this great add-on or extra here, a nice leather pouch, or sheath rather, because it does have a belt loop, and it's heavy leather. It's got Fox's logo embossed on the front here, nice heavy stitching. It is made in Italy, and uh, fits the knife very snugly. So that's just a, a really nice addition or extra to get. And then the knife itself comes in a little cloth bag, again with Fox's logo. They've put a little leather thong on the key ring, and here it is. Yes, this knife comes in staghorn, authentic deer horn and uh, it's really nice. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh, while we're on the subject of packaging, just again, this is a little comparison to Victorinox, a knife that costs about a third as much, but here is how Victorinox Spartan comes. We'll put that out on the table so we can use it to compare the two. Right off the bat, let's get the uh, specs out of the way for this knife. It is a larger knife. Uh, it measures in the closed position 100 millimeters, so that's just under 4 inches. And that compares to a Victorinox Spartan at 91 millimeters, or about 3 and 5 eighths inches. Uh, the blade is 72 millimeters long, which is just under 3 inches. So this ought to be legal carry just about everywhere with a less than 3 inch blade that doesn't lock. Um, it weighs about 105 grams which is about 3.7 ounces, so it's uh, considerably heavier than a Victorinox. You'll feel it in your pocket. That's probably why they give you the sheath. I think a Victorinox Spartan weighs about 2 ounces. Let's talk about this deer horn, this stag. It's really quite uh, unusual to get a modern uh, production knife of this type with uh, staghorn scales, and um, they are pretty nice. I will say that they did a good job matching them and a not so good job matching them. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, as you can see here on the mark side or the show side, 
um, it looks almost like second cut stag. Whereas here on the reverse, you've got this uh, heavily uh, channeled, very gnarly uh, piece of stag. It's got a lot of great character. Uh, it's kind of strange that they didn't put that on the show side. Um, usually when you see this kind of thing, you see the uh, prettier piece or the more uh, interesting piece on the show side. Um, so aesthetically, no, they're not matched too well. Uh, dimensionally, though, they are. Uh, it might be kind of hard to tell because of the color difference and everything, but the thickness of the scales uh, on each side is very similar. And the thickness is pretty consistent, the run of the scale. Now, you've seen stag knives where one side is very thick and the other is thin. Maybe one has a, a large uh, a convex bulge and the other one a big con concave uh, divot in it. And um, this knife doesn't have that. So they've done a really good job uh, sizing um, or matching the scales size-wise. They're just not very well matched aesthetically. So it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I do wish that this had been on the front of the knife. I don't know how important that is because I'll really be using this knife. It's not a display knife for me, uh, but it could be for someone because it's, it's that nice of a knife. Now you'll see here that it has brass rivets that are reinforced with brass washers, and those are done very well. They're extremely flush and smooth. And then you have brass pins that are nicely domed. They did a great job with that. I don't know if those are machine spun or hand hammered. I would say probably machine spun somehow. Yeah, but they just did a really good job because that's not easy to do on a piece of stag like this, as you can imagine, and uh, particularly not to crack it. There are absolutely no cracks or chips in this deer horn. One other thing while we're looking at the exterior of the knife, um, they did use brass outer liners, which is nice. Now strangely though, it seems to have an aluminum center spacer. I would have rather seen that be brass. I'm sure that was done for cost consideration or maybe weight. But I just love seeing brass here when you open up these back tools. I just think it's so pretty. Okay, I'm getting ready to show you uh, what I think is one of the nicest things about the knife. Before I do, uh, just one little design suggestion for Fox. I really like this knife. I think it's great value for the money with these premium features. But there are a couple of little design flaws, I think. And one is the very small nail nick uh, for the main blade and its placement. Uh, you can see here that on the opening tools, you have a much a bigger nail nick. Um, here on the main blade, you have a very uh, small nail nick, and it's positioned right over the can opener. Uh, I would have rather seen it here in the gap between the two tools. If that didn't give you enough leverage to get the blade open, they could have put it up here toward the forward end and given you a little deeper nail nick. But um, it's still easy enough to open, and it's a fine blade. Being a bigger knife, being a 100 millimeter knife, um, it's a bigger blade. And let me just compare that to the Victorinox Spartan so you can see the size difference. It's uh, a little longer and a little wider. The blade stock uh, is a little thicker, although it does uh, reduce here after the tang, and that's a function, I think, of getting that blade to uh, pass by the secondary pin blade. It's got a nice polish on it. I've got fingerprints on it already, and it's kind of smeary, but it has a nice uh, mirror polish. Let's see if we can capture the camera or something in here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's got this little Fox logo laser etched in it. I just love that. It has a really nice edge. Fox has a very modern production facility, and they do a lot of things with very modern machinery. 
But two things I think they do is hand assemble and hand sharpen. And they did a really fine job with this edge. It's even, evenly beveled. It's very sharp. And it comes to a very nice point. Looks sort of uh, swedged on this edge. Just that side, not this side. Again, I think that's for the purposes of passing by cleanly the um, pen blade when you close it. But here's the greatest thing about it. There's a little nail nick. Um, if you look at the tank stamp, you'll see that it not only says Maniago, Italy, but it says M390. So this is Bowler Steel's, Bowler of Austria. This is Bowler's Super Steel. This is a powder metallurgy steel. Uh, premium steel. It's got very high wear and corrosion resistance. So it ought to hold an edge really well. Uh, it's not too hard. It's got a rock wall hardness of 55 to 57. So you should be able to sharpen that at home. But that's the kind of premium steel that you know, people have been begging Victorinox to put on their knives for a very long time. So uh, in addition to the deer horn scales, you've got premium blade steel. By the way, the knife has great snap, opening and closing. The walk and talk on it is very good. All right, let's take a look at that secondary blade. It is a spear point pen blade. Again, it's got a very nice polish to it and an excellent edge and an excellent point. And here it is up against the Victorinox Spartan again, just for size comparison. Let's take a look at the uh, opening tools. This is the screwdriver cap lifter and um, it's very nice. It looks like it should work quite well. I haven't tried it yet. Um, as long as that mouth is big enough to catch the cap. Uh, let's sh show it up against the Victorinox. Now, interestingly, you know, it's on the different end. Uh, it's up on the front end of the knife, where with the Victorinox, the can opener is now up on the front end. It's similar in size, maybe just a little more reach, but it does have a narrower tip. So I'm thinking it would be very good with small screws, but it might not be quite as good with larger screws. Of course, it does not have a wire stripper, nor does it have a half stop. Like the Victorinox, none of the tools on the Fox have a half stop. Also, of course, you're not going to get uh, tweezers and a toothpick uh, in the staghorn scales. Next up, we'll take a look at the can opener. And it is a um, safety style can opener. And um, it looks very capable again. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, it's got a sharpened edge here. You can see the bevel and a very uh, nice point. So it shouldn't have any problem piercing steel as long as they've shaped this hook to uh, catch the can lip adequately. There should be no problems. Unlike the Victorinox, um, there's no you know small screwdriver function on that. And then the back tools. Here's the corkscrew. It's nice. It's uh, it's long. It's heavy, and it does this like it should. So you, you guys know what that's for, right? I mean, um, well, when you put your corkscrew down in your wine bottle or your cork, uh, you put it all the way down in there, and most people just try to pull it straight out. And unless you're the Incredible Hulk, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. So what you do is, of course, you put your hand around the neck of the bottle and you start camming that cork up. And then you move your hand up the neck of the bottle and the cork and you keep camming it up until you've got it out enough where you can just pop it. So it's good to see that it does that. Let's compare it to the Victorinox. Yeah, it is longer, but it really doesn't seem to be any thicker. And then finally we have the uh, awl or the punch. It has a cutout on this side. Um, this would be the second design flaw that I've seen in this knife. Um, first of all, this cutout is way too big. <laughs> it's 
ridiculously big. Um, but it doesn't do anything for you because they've put the nail nick here. And so in order to get that tool open and put your thumb nail in the nail nick, your thumb's up here outside of that cutout. So this cutout needs to be moved closer uh, this way, further this way, underneath the nail nick, and made about half the size, in my opinion. Regardless, it's easy enough to get that tool open. And here you can see that it is just your standard kind of dull punch. It reminds me a little bit of a winger punch. There's no sharpened edge, so I can't call it a reamer. Uh, it is tapered from this side, so it comes to a bit of a thinner point here. I wouldn't say it's a sharp point. You're not really in danger of pricking yourself with that. Um, but I think it's sharp enough to punch through leather and heavy cloth. And it's nice that they did give you a sewing eye here. Um, it's awfully close to the end. Um, but I think that actually might help you uh, in the sewing function of the knife, of the, uh, of the tool. And here it is against Victorinox's. And no, nobody's punch or all or reamer compares to Victorinox's. They just have this one down to a science. It's got a very sharp edge here for drilling. Uh, it's very sharp here for punching through things. There's your sewing eye. It has a great nail nick right there. It is a little hard to get to, though, because it's kind of hidden up behind the um, corkscrew. So where can you get one of these and what will it cost you? Well, um, you can go to Fox's website and look at them. And currently they don't have this model on the website, but they do have a model with a saw. They don't sell directly from their website though, so you need to find a dealer. Uh, Boker sells a lot of Fox knives, but Boker's US site doesn't have this knife yet. Boker's Germany website does, although it says it won't be available until September 23rd. In the meantime, there are several sellers on eBay selling it uh, from anywhere $99.84 to $107.79 with free shipping, all of them. Uh, if you do buy it on eBay, just be careful. Many of those sellers just show one stock photo of this knife. And when you look at those photos very carefully, you can see on the blade tang that it's a different designation. It's a designation for a much lower grade common steel. So um, if you're not sure what steel you're going to get, be sure to ask. So if you want the uh, M390 that you, you certainly get it. Okay, so thanks for taking a look with me at Fox Knives Multipurpose Pocket Knife in Staghorn Scales with Bowler's M390 Blade Steel. It has brass liners and comes with a great leather sheath. I mean, what's not to like? Well, it could have a better all. <laughs> Thanks for watching.